just move this over. Okay. Okay. See that? That's what one Jana right there. That's what I did. Okay. You turn it this way and you do that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris. Okay. He's all right this week. How's it it's going? Okay. Today? He likes me. He like ladies and gentlemen, he likes me again. Jason, I'm uh I'm doing well. I it's an honor to uh to be here again and approaching something I didn't, you know, I didn't think we'd be here approaching th episode 300. Um you know, you're a very unique guy. I'm a very unique guy. Together, two unique guys who don't necessarily like to, you know, be very social necessarily, mm -hmm. can get along and talk and uh, and create beautiful content together. It's a wonderful thing. So I'm glad to glad to be here as I always am. Thank you. Yeah, rounding the base here on uh, 300 episodes, and we're gonna. Keep it going, and Chris, for a lot of the audience, we're just getting started because new people are finding us every yes. week, and we we know that comes from people sharing the show, so we appreciate it. Um, let's start off with a review of the week, and also, everyone should know, we're going to be talking about YouTube on today's episode and YouTube on next week's episode as well. We're doing a two-parter, doing a deep dive on YouTube and uh, YouTube advertising. That's what we're talking about today. Um before we get into that, just a review of the week from Martin from York in the United Kingdom. Hmm. Chris, North, UK, South, East, West, you want to take a guess? Oh, man. Central. I feel like it's a trap. Wow. It's central. Let's look it up. York, UK. Okay. I didn't know. But I have a feeling I... central as well. Let's see. Yeah. Everything seems like everything's kind of right around London, I would assume. Well, let's see. Let's see. Oh no, Chris, you're wrong. You don't know oh. your you don't know your it's oh. kind of to the to the northeast. It's way, way north of London. Oh. Oh. Well. Well, now you know. So Martin now wrote in and he sent a contact form on our website, paidsearchpodcast.com. He said, Hi, Chris and Jason. I can't leave a written review via Spotify, which is a shame because you definitely deserve it. Hmm. We I, do. Isn't that unfortunate? You can't leave reviews on Spotify. I don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. Your podcast caught my attention because it just says what it is. No pointless superlatives, just descriptive and understated. I think that's what I'm known for, Chris, mm -hmm. being understated. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to produce such a fascinating, entertaining, and informative podcast. Thank you, Martin. Well, Martin, thank you. Thank you for that review and um for anyone that listens via spotify and can't leave a review uh feel free to write in and and uh, we'll try to read it on the air so thanks martin um chris we're not doing a new segment this week i got to cool off after last week the mm -hmm. one thing i will say do we all remember like maybe like two two and a half years ago when facebook was going to go all in on video oh <laughs> So I just thought it was relevant to remember that because today we're talking about YouTube ads. So, yeah, we're not talking about <laughs> Facebook. I don't think That's, that worked out too well. But hey, maybe, no. maybe again, it's all about stepping up to the plate. And we've got the metaverse coming up and we'll see how they do uh, with the that metaverse. one. Do you have to do that whenever you say metaverse? Well, you have, you to, have make... to do it if you want to be in the metaverse. You got to put on these yeah, goggles and not be able to see things around you. And you got to go, oh, wow, I'm in the metaverse. Have you, have you used VR before, Jason? No. No. I have, and I can say it was by far one of the most uncomfortable experiences that i had had, not only just because it's hot, it's heavy, but also just with um, like motion sickness and, you know, just like disorientation. And also, if you don't have a big, large space, I was mm -hmm. like in a essentially a closet, you know, small, uh, larger closet using it. Yeah. I mean, you slam your face into things, you know, because you, you you lose all reference to where you are in the real world. I just, I never found them to be comfortable. I hear a lot of that. I hear a lot of the sickness thing. I've heard a few people say that, oh, it's life changing and blah, blah, blah. But that's just the minority so far. What's yeah. kind of sad is I went to a mall about seven months ago. It's the last time I was at the mall. 
Yeah. And they've got right. like virtual reality mm-hmm. stations inside mm-hmm. the mall, like in the aisle where like you put it in a few quarters. Did and you do it? Put the goggles. No, I didn't do it. But oh, yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's where this is going. That's no, that's I'm saying that's say. the, that's the future yeah. of tech. That's the future of this big business. The, the mall it's, kiosk, what they're doing mm-hmm. at the malls. Anyway, like I said, we're not going to do the news today, but I just had to uh, point that out. They, they went in all in on video and, here we are still on YouTube, so mm-hmm. um, says a lot. So, Chris, why don't you uh, tell us about Optio here, and then we will jump into what kinds of ads you can run on YouTube. Yeah, so if I say the word scripts, do you do your ears perk up? I bet that most of you don't. When it comes to Google Ads, scripts is something that most of you don't use. They, they can be very confusing, uh, intimidating, and um, you know, they require a certain tech stack to be able to understand and use. So let me tell you about a better solution to using scripts, and that's Optio. Optio has a error detection system that will help you find uh, broken links, help you with uh, ad uh, spell check. It will help you with... Um, uh, conflicts with double keywords, all these things that people have to create and write these scripts and then manage them and, and set them into to different client accounts or different accounts that they, they, they're, they're, they own themselves. This all in one system, Optio will help you do that. I mean, set aside all the other features that they have, like managing keywords and improving ad creative and optimizing your bids and the many, many things that they do, I mean, that's just one. So it is absolutely worth a free trial, an eight-week free trial, which is a special offer only. If you go to this link, optio.com slash PSP, that's O-P-T-E-O dot com slash PSP, eight-week free trial exclusively from the Paid Search Podcast. Okay, thanks, Chris. So yeah, let's get into um, our our episode here about YouTube. Uh, today we're talking about how to build a YouTube campaign in Google Ads. I've got good news for everybody out there. If you have uh, some experience with like search campaigns and remarketing in the display network, uh, jumping into YouTube uh, is very, very doable. And I've also just been hearing a lot of good things about YouTube lately from uh, very advanced advertisers in terms of the targeting, getting better and better. So it's a very powerful tool, um, probably underutilized by most advertisers, I would say. Um, People are very focused on search with good reason, getting direct leads, but uh, it also helps uh, to build your business long term, I think, to be running ads on YouTube. And if you're running ads on cable or on TV, you've got no excuse. You should definitely be on YouTube as well, because you can tighten up mm. that targeting. So yeah, Chris, how to create a YouTube campaign in Google ads. Let's just get it started uh, with the types of ads. What kinds of ads uh, can you run on YouTube? Yeah. So there's a small inventory of ads that are available. Um, and if you're not used to YouTube, it's going to, you know, even these terms should sound really understandable because uh you know if you've used youtube then you've experienced it so there are in stream video ads okay so these are ads that many people experience and they they play uh during the ad they can show before the ad um and they are skippable so there's skippable and non-skippable the non-skippable have a limit and the skippable essentially as the advertiser, what what you're interested in, there is not really a limit. I think it's like 30 minutes or something, I believe, for a skippable uh, ad. It can be quite long. You could put a long video and and, and someone can skip after that five second mark. Um, And then last, there's discovery ads, or at least until recently, there was discovery ads. Now, as Jason has helpfully uh, uh, reminded me there is uh, a new a, a new aim for a new name for discovery ads is it's called in feed video ads so this is very different this inventory sets itself apart because it does not show up in videos the other ones are all in stream and this one is only going to be activated by the person clicking on it that's it <laughs> Yeah, so I guess, Chris, let me ask you a good way to think about the videos. Um, 
you know, skip, non-skippable, skippable, whatever. I guess non-skippable is up to 15 seconds. But the two major types that I see are like video ads inside of someone else's video, be it uh, at the mm-hmm. beginning or somewhere in the middle or wherever they choose to put the ads. Yeah. Um, or at the very end. So in stream. And then there's discovery. Um, now I'm a YouTube premium subscriber. And yes. so I don't see ads on YouTube anymore. So I'm kind of out of that mindset. Um, arguments for either kind of ad, I guess, in stream, people have to watch a certain portion of the video, like at least five seconds. So there's some value there. They have to see you. Um, and then discover, I guess you could argue, well, people have to take action and click on the thumbnail they see on a search results, on a re- related video next to a video or a homepage. I see the merits for both. Um, before the show, you were telling me you kind of prefer in-stream if I heard you correctly. Yeah. Um, I mean, in my mind, it's, it's YouTube is really about branding and awareness. Um, yeah, lead generation is not something that I use and we're going to get more into that, but in YouTube for ads. me, I, yeah, I, <clears throat> I don't really use, um, Disc- uh, excuse me in feed video ads i usually like you know someone to be essentially forced the impression upon them right i mean mm-hmm. i i want them to see it and then they have to skip um so i mean that's that's what i prefer that's that's what i run 95 percent of my campaigns on i mean mm-hmm. very few in the past have i ever run a discovery uh video campaign mm-hmm I'd like to I'd like to build a little brand awareness for whatever kind of light you've got right now. It's making you look really good. <laughs> you're so easily distracted. I don't. You're, I think hey, we're, hey I let's think, put it I this way. On a roll. You're, you're distractible. You guys got to check us out on YouTube. Chris, he's like obviously in the top two Google Ads managers in the world. But top two, right? Most <laughs> handsome and the best Google Ad skills. I think you I think you own that lane, Chris. Oh, boy. Okay. Are you going to take a sip? Let's all watch him. Go ahead. I'd, I'd buy whatever you're drinking right there. <laughs> it's water. <laughs> hey, so Chris, um, I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like, it's very hard for me, and, and then we'll move on uh, to, to the bidding. But I, I, the types of ads, it, it's been a little mm-hmm. bit of a struggle for me because I'm in the lead generation mindset coming from search campaigns. Yeah. So when I get over to YouTube, I don't fully embrace the whole brand awareness and someone's going to buy something 10 years later because you have Mindshare and all that, even though it's a real thing. Um, I'm in that lead generation mindset and I love the, don't love the in-feed video ad name. Um, it should be called no. discovery ads because yeah. it's someone discovering you and taking action. I like the term. Um, but discovery ads now called in-feed video ads. I like that there's some kind of lead generation aspect to it there's like a positive movement the the user on youtube has to make like they have to do a search in youtube and then um click on your video there that's listed in the results they have to be watching a video and then right below that if they're on like uh mobile or whatever to the side on desktop i guess see like a related videos and see your thumbnail there and click on it and take that action that said Every time I try to do that, I'm often disappointed in terms of the volume that I'm able to Mm -hmm. get. And so I think if you're going for volume and like you're saying brand, definitely do in stream. I'd say always do in stream when you're on YouTube, but maybe sometimes try the in feed video ads to see what that positive action that people have to take before they, before you pay Google, if you're doing a cost per view and, and see if that, leads to better traffic i'm always tempted by it but i'm still kind of um undecided but does that that instinct make sense to you as a big search advertiser as well yeah definitely i mean you know i I think there's definitely a place for um in feed video ads uh discovery discovery ads but most of the time no i mean i immediately go to uh to skippable non-skippable in stream ads okay. that's what i prefer specifically skippable because the thing about non-skippable is they have to be uh or excuse me non-skippable the thing about non-skippable is because they have to be a certain length 
you have to cut a video down to a specific parameter in order for it to even be able to be a non-skippable ad. So not everybody has a 15 second, uh, you know, ad cut that they can, that they can do. But in essence, the most versatile ad out there is in stream because you can have any length and it's just, it fits, you know, so it's the most versatile way to get ads to run on, on, on YouTube. Yeah, and I'm doing a little experiment for our show, running some some YouTube ads with our full episodes that are like at 30 minutes to an hour long or 40 minutes to an hour long. And I just like the idea of like paying a very little bit of money and then someone seeing you for 30 minutes at a time. Um, mm. So I like the freedom that you can get with uh, yeah, in-stream skippable. Because yeah. if if someone doesn't skip and they're interested, that you could kind of uh, build a lot of awareness with them uh, with a longer video. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, that gets us into the conversation of how you should bid for these uh, video ads on YouTube. What bidding strategy should you use when you run video ads on YouTube? Why don't you kind of break down the different bidding strategy types? Because I think it's a lot more simple than search. And um, then we can talk about what you prefer. What we prefer. Yeah. So, the, the you know, the simplest is to just talk about CPM and CPV. Unfortunately, they're both um, very similar in the way that they sound, but they're, they focus on different things. So CPM, for anyone in the marketing industry, knows that that's a reference to paying per thousand. So uh, cost per M, CPM is you know cost per thousand, and you pay for a number of, this is important, impressions. You're going to be focusing on impressions. Now, impressions are different in YouTube than views. So a CPV is a cost per view. You pay for someone to view it. So an impression means that they just, the ad was pre present, but there's no, what they used to refer to as true view, right? They used to have the, the phrase, I don't, I don't think they really use it much anymore, but a true view means that the person has seen it. And that's what the five second skippable is all about. The fact that someone can, you know, engage and then skip it. And that's a view. So an impression is lesser than a view as far mm -hmm. as inner, uh, you know, interactivity or, or value. It's less, it's less valuable. Yeah. So yeah. would it be safe to say uh, yeah. cost per impression? You're going to be your, your pennies or your dollars are going further than yes. cost per view, at least in terms of people. Yes. Yes. So my, my temptation, like, again, I'm coming from the search world. I'm always tempted to do cost per view. You get a nice manual bid on there. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've been talking with some people in our uh, PSP Facebook group on Facebook. Uh, great group, by the way, growing a lot. And um, and there's a lot of lot of uh, good discussion there. So we encourage all our listeners to to join us there um a lot of people are are saying they like cost per cpm cost per impression thousand impressions um someone was saying like if with cost per view, per view because you're bidding so much google knows that and then you have to end up paying a lot so you like get over aggressive more aggressive with your bidding than you think you are i don't know about that um but what's kind of your preference in terms of uh cpv versus cpm so, I mean, it comes down to impressions and views. And for me, showing something for the money spent is much easier to do when someone views it, right? Um, when there's an impression, what do you what do you get? You know, you don't even know if they really saw it. There's so much yeah. going on on the YouTube page. But with the but with oh, excuse the view, me, excuse me, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of discovery ads, at least in yes. that sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're you're right. There, there's no data about how much interactivity. And we'll talk about this more uh, next week um, when we talk about results and when, what to look at. But when it comes to a view, you get data about how they interacted and how much they watch, you know, and an yeah. impression doesn't give that. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's my preference. So you like and, you like cost per view? I do. Yeah, cost I do. I do, mine. too. I just I feel like if I'm <laughs> running on YouTube, I want people to see what I'm advertising and I want it have an ability to control what I pay for yeah. what the goal is. And so I like, 
we'll talk about this next week, how to judge the results and all that. But I like putting in those view columns and duration and earned views and all that. And then see yeah. what I'm and earn subscribers and, and seeing what I'm what I'm paying for that. So yeah. Um I should probably try uh CPM a little more, see if it if it goes further, but I, I have been uh kind of attracted to uh cost per view. That said, Chris, I'm kind of thinking about strategy. I think if you can really dial in your audience and your confidence in the audience seeing your ads being highly relevant, then maybe just spreading it to as many of those people as often as possible uh, might be a way to, it might be a little more cost effective to do that with impressions. Uh, but new campaigns, I, I like view as well. So we've talked about the types of ads you can run on YouTube. We've talked about the uh, types of bidding strategies you can do on YouTube for everyone listening. That's going, you know, Hey, this is kind of simple. It's kind of similar to regular Google ads. That's the correct instinct. I think yeah. um, this, this yeah. shouldn't be difficult. You should be able to translate your Google remarketing and Google display. If you've been on there and Google search skills over to this other platform, which is different, but a lot of it's uh, the same. And that's why the, it's in the Google ads platform itself. It's in the yeah. dashboard. The only real difference, I mean, the same modules, the same targeting modules are there that comes from display. The only thing different is the um, the inventory that you use to get it shown. On display, you have images, mm -hmm. you have responsive images, you have HTML5, you have all that stuff. But the only difference with YouTube is that in, the images are gone, and now we have uh, video inventory to show. So, I mean, that's really the only difference. So if you're yeah. used to display, absolutely. It, it, it same modules so then the question becomes where do i show my video ads on youtube the the targeting and so you've got a great way that you've break you break this down you also break it down this way um people versus content uh yeah. on the display network as well so walk us through the the people versus content mindset when it comes to how to target your video ads on youtube mm. Yep. So anyone who's listened to the podcast, you know, as many of our listeners listen to, you know, almost all 300 of them, um, you're going to hear this in the same way that you've heard it with a display. Um, there are people which are represented by audiences. You can target people based on, um, you know, how they interact uh, with uh, the Internet, what pages they go to in market affinity, all kinds of different audiences. Uh, you can even make custom audiences like these like, represent a like Google ads, hunks market size one. <laughs> That's good. That was good. That was good. These are tip other than that one audience. These represent a very large number. <laughs> or, or you could just call him or go to his website. If you want yeah. to get a hold of him. <laughs> Easy website. Just uh, yeah. a um, uh, very large number of potential matches. Okay. Audiences represent a huge number because if it's a person, a person could represent a thousand different places that the ad could show. And if there's a million people in that, now you're talking, I don't want to do the math, but a big number of uh, potential impressions of, of where that can show. Okay. Then we get into content. No matter who's watching it, if they're watching it, then mm. you target that content. So target this is video. typically, this can be very wide. You could say, I just want to show up on, um, business videos, right? That could be very wide or it could be very narrow where you say, I only want to show up on, uh, you know, videos about dog washing, you know, something like that. So, uh, and then finally something I'm not really necessarily a big fan of, um, is demographic targeting. You love everybody. Yeah. I see everyone equal and I don't really care if they're one age or another, because in my experience coming from Google search, I mean, Jason, you know, when a client says, hey, I, my target demographic are males from this age to this age, and they make this much money, and, and they're not parents. Mm -hmm. Do you respect that request, Jason? Be honest. Chris, I'll be honest. We we have a differing opinion here. I'm attracted to the demographic targeting on search. I'm, attra I'm attracted. I'm obsessed with it. I'm attracted to the demographic targeting on YouTube, and I'm obsessed with it. I'm sorry. We have a really? little bit. Yeah, I've just gotten more into it over the years. Um, oh, wow! It, now it's not for every advertiser. Some some advertisers, uh, a twenty four year old is the same as a fifty year old to them. Um, mm -hmm. Someone in the top ten percent of income is the same as someone in the bottom fifty percent of income. 
but sometimes it's not. And, and, um, and I, I've, I've gotten more and more into demographic targeting over the years. I will give you this though. Um, it can be overused and another factor where, you know, it doesn't really require a lot of focus. Another reason why is because oftentimes the demographics sort themselves out already. Like if mm -hmm. you're trying to target, yep. um, you know, people who are in the market for enterprise payroll software on YouTube, there's not going to be a lot of 18 year olds in the bottom 50% of income. Right. It's going to be a lot of people who are age 30 to age 55 who are mm -hmm. higher income. And it just naturally sorts itself out, especially with search, a lot of search topics. So um, it is, it does often sort itself out, but that said, um, because they give us the option a lot of times, I just have over the years found myself uh, using it more and more. Yeah, I, I think. But at the I, same time, very I get, well said. I, I get well your said. I get your approach as well. Where you know what, I'm here to judge targeting. I'm here to judge uh, control the things I can control. Let me do that. Let me not overdo it early on. Let me see how the data comes in, and then yeah. once we get the data, then we can decide what we pay. For different demographics based on their performance i think that's a totally valid um approach as well yeah okay so chris pe people versus content i mean uh, we're going to get into some examples of audiences and content uh both after the break here um but before we do that targeting people versus targeting content um this is tough. I don't, I don't have it. What's better. What do you, what do you do on YouTube? What oh, do you boy. prefer? Um, gosh, that it's impossible to answer. I mean, it depends on the client, you know, I mean, it depends on, um, you know, what, what, what it is. Um, I mean, it would go through just a couple examples. I mean, if it's a, if it's a home services company, um, you know, I, I'm probably going to go wider, you know, because, uh, there could be, I'm, well, let's say I do both. I might do an audiences and I might do uh, a topic, um, targeting, you know, content targeting to be more specific. Mm. Um, so, and then I might do a third ad group that targets both audience and content. So that it's not only the person is qualified, but also the video they're watching is not a music video, but they're watching a video about, you know, <clears throat> new driveways in their house or something. So, like so that. you, so you like to layer. Yeah. I yeah. think layering is good. And really the best answer, which you're not going to be surprised with is to test it. Yeah. That's the best answer. Do, do all of it. It's cheap. It's worth just, it's not like search in search. If a client gives you, you know, 1500 different keywords, mm -hmm. And a hundred bucks to test it, you're going to be like, oh no, that's dumb. I'm not. I can't test all those keywords, you know. But in YouTube, you could. You could just throw a whole bunch of different things together and just test it all and see how it works. That's the great thing about it. It's very cheap. Yeah, I like the idea of layering. I like the idea of different ad groups testing different mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, copying, pasting those ad groups. It's not that hard to set that up, and then you can see uh, what comes in. But I, I like the way you break it down. You've got your audiences, which are people after the break we'll talk about how you target those audiences uh and then we also have content which is the videos you target those videos and we'll talk about options for that so we're going to take our dance break here and then we will be back after the break to talk about audience targeting and content targeting ladies and gentlemen to remind you about our very generous sponsor who's been with us for a long time years because it is the only software that we recommend to help Google ads managers, uh, business owners, uh, freelancers, uh, agencies to get more done in Google ads. I was bragging about one of my you know favorite little things that's so unique is Optio checks for common errors from spelling mistakes to keyword conflicts. And it recommends fixes whenever something comes up. So you can be safe and feel safe knowing that your accounts are being monitored, uh, for things that you would very easily miss, you know, uh, there can be broken ads that, you know, 404 pages that you're sending people uh, to and Google may not tell you quick enough. You know, you might have a day or two where you're just missing that. Uh, so uh, check it out. Optio.com slash PSP. Okay. Thanks, Chris. So now we're going to get into 
the audiences, how to target different audiences on YouTube. Let's start off here with breaking down interest and habits versus in market. So interest and habits, Chris, affinity in market, what people are actively researching and planning and life events. Why don't you kind of break down that difference? Yeah. So I'm going to use a couple different phrases here. So in your mind, set the word affinity as a interest habit or hobby. That's kind of how I think about it. You know, my favorite is just hobby. You know, what, what is, what is a hobby? It's an affinity. It's something that they enjoy, something they like. I have an affinity to the number one Google ads manager in the world. Right. That's why you do a show with them. He's my, he's my habit. Um, so the other side of it is in market. This is something on a much shorter time scale. It has to do with someone who's interested in something not, for a long, necessarily a long period of time, although it could be, but um, it's something where it's a service, a product, um, and we're going to go, go through a few examples, but this is something that's represented by their search history, something they're looking for, something that might have something to do with their uh, you know, a life stage they're in or other activities that Google knows is going to lead to this. You know, If they're doing home shopping, Google's going to know they might need moving cleaner services cleaner moving services whatever Chris, can I get, yeah. just give you an example here of the difference um it's crazy how much they've come up with in terms of different types of audiences they used to be pretty basic but yeah. now you can just go into audiences and then that search uh bar that comes up to search for different audiences i typed in soccer and here's a good example of like uh affinity versus in market they have an affinity audience or segment called soccer fans Okay. Uh, the, these are people who enjoy or who follow or, or enjoy playing soccer and they don't, the person that doesn't change. They, if the, as long as they enjoy following or playing soccer, they're going to be part of that audience. Okay. Um, and it's like a lifetime thing as long as they're into the soccer, soccer, it's who they are, but there's also wow. an, in the market, there's in, multiple in the market audiences for, um, soccer apparel they're currently in the market for soccer apparel soccer mm. tickets and there's even i believe i'm going to type in yeah there's even um in the market for soccer balls and sports goals so it really um has been niched down over the years in terms of the types of audiences that you can target and that's kind of a the difference there between um, affinity and, and in the market. Yeah. Good example. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a subtle difference, but that's, yeah, you're right. The system has gotten better and better. Well, let's go through a couple of, um, other examples, uh, and we'll, we'll break them out by interests, habits, affinity. That's one category and the other one's in market. So we'll start with interests and habits. Uh, something I found, uh, was, uh, travel, right? So the general travel, um, is is one interest or habit or hobby, um, but it can narrow all the way down into business travelers and snowbound travelers. Um, I mean, that's that's really interesting because imagine you have uh, your travel industry or you do something with travel, and you know you don't have to just target travel as an affinity audience. You could travel, or you could target specifically what they're interested in traveling, and I think. I think that's really cool. And everybody knows I'm really big into sports, Jason. So I looked up things about sports. And uh, after I Googled what this was, I found out um, there are golf enthusiasts. Didn't know that was a thing. And uh, also Olympic fans. Another very specific example of an affinity group. So the best thing to do is go in and look through these audiences and discover what's available. You may say, well, I don't want to do YouTube, but you might find an audience. <laughs> oh, you'll that, find an audience. That that you're like, oh, well, I have to try this, you know, and 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 and, and it's such a cost, a cheap uh cost per view. A lot of times it's worth it. Yeah, it, it's definitely worth it to try because if you can get in front of these people that are either just interested in what you sell and they're just interested in that, like generally because it's one of their hobbies or affinities or they're in the market for whatever you're, you're offering. There's, uh, it's a little crazy how many um, audiences there are 
uh, these days that, that you can try targeting and like which one should you do test and and kind of see see yeah. how you the performance you get um chris let's talk about the examples of content well let me just since we're going to talk about content chris one thing you have to free yourself from as uh as a as a advertiser for the audience hmm. you have to remember because i'm used to looking at search terms and search uh, and video. my habit yeah. we'll talk about placements in a minute but my habit is to look at the placements what videos did my ad show up on when i was targeting people who are have the affinity of traveling to beaches like uh what videos did i show up on and then i see a bunch of like james taylor videos like acoustic session 1974 james <laughs> taylor at the grammys like that's all those people watch you know um yeah over and over and you're like why am i advertising on these you have to remember it's with with audience it's not about the video it's not about where your ad showed it's about who you're showing it to and you can judge how long they watch your video you can judge how many subscribers you can get you can judge your overall business results but you have to have a level of trust that the people seeing that video on on whatever youtube videos are seeing your ad on are the audience it is and it takes that level of trust and you just kind of have to judge your overall business results yeah. want to throw that out there because it's a bad habit i get into all the time too harshly judging the placements or even looking at them at all uh yeah. when i'm targeting the audience because it's a different kind of thing yeah so let's talk about the the audience that, or let's talk about the content now i should say um the videos showing up on different videos no matter who's watching them kind of give us some examples of how you can do content targeting on youtube yeah, so this is probably the the coolest way to do it. If you think of audiences, it's kind of like you're throwing a very large net, right? You know, it's just like you're going to catch a lot. But when it comes to content targeting, you can be much more selective. Now, that might mean that your cost per view goes up in order to get some impressions, uh, or you may get very, very few or no impressions at all. Um, you know, sometimes there just may not be any inventory, depending on your settings. Um, but there's a lot. Okay. So let's go with three different ways that you can do it. One of them is new to me. I actually, when I was writing the notes on this, I, uh, kind of discovered something I did not know about. Um, number one topics, easiest one to go with. It's essentially the, uh, sister to audiences, right? So you can pick a topic and anything that fits within that topic you'll show an ad or you'll be, let me be clear. You'll, you'll be eligible to show an ad on. Doesn't mean it'll always show. Uh, things like some topics might include men's health. One of the things Jason watches a, a, a lot of. Because we're about um, the same age, right? No, I'm uh, okay. I'm older, much All older, right. mature. We won't have that conversation. Okay. Yeah, no. I didn't say I watched. I said you're a big subscriber. Uh, men's health, uh, boating, doors and windows. I specifically wanted to include doors and windows because... I mean, that's a very, you know, home services, home sales, you know, there's a door and window company in every place of the United States, you know, uh, and that's a great kind of people do a lot of research about, you know, home products and doors and windows and what kind of windows, you know, home efficiency windows and energy efficiency, stuff like that. It's a great example of a topic that can be uh, very practical for a lot of people. Yeah, Chris, I mean, this gets to the question of which one should you, the person or the content well, we were talking about soccer earlier, someone in the market for sports goals. That's one way to do it. You can also target mm -hmm. videos. They have a topic for soccer equipment. So Boy, you are really I, on this soccer I, thing. Well, it, it just breaks. It just shows you the different ways that that okay. my, my, my point with soccer is how narrow it gets these days. I see. Um, I see. Yeah, that, that's my point. It's just how narrow like there's a topic for soccer equipment videos. Hmm. on youtube i would not have guessed that before we did our deep dive here yeah some people that love soccer may be offended by your lack of creativity or respect given to that uh that demographic but uh, let's move on uh to keywords which is which is essentially custom topics um i think personally the most the most mystery comes from keywords i Jason, don't ask me too many questions because it confuses me and I don't really know the answers. But yeah. when you add keywords, it it creates a custom topic of itself 
using the keywords. Um, you usually want to add several, quite a few, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 uh, keywords. Uh, and this helps create a, you know, a custom topic that you can then show. What blows my mind, and I never really understood, and the same thing's true for display, why then, if they say they use a conglomerate of all the keywords to, to, to kind of pick your videos that you're going to show up on, why then do you get impressions and views and, and clicks and things on specific keywords when you do it? Shouldn't it just say, you know, this group of keywords got a, a view, this group of keywords got an impression? I mean, that... Yeah, I don't really it, understand why it, it differentiates individual keywords. Yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it can be tough with video coming over from search because like we've been kind of saying the opposite, which is it's easy in the sense that it's the same platform, the same kind of a lot of the same tools and terminology, but it's like a very different mindset. And yeah, I think for us with search, we're focused on showing up on the exact searches and having full control and understanding everything you're doing in there. And I think with YouTube, my kind of advanced user advice is just number one, try a lot and be very creative. Our topics going to work better than keywords. Our placements going to be work better than keywords. Is the audience going to be work better than content? I would take an open approach every time and say, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We're, I don't know. We're going to try a lot. The second advanced kind of tip is, beyond try a lot is when you find something that's working, don't question it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't salt. Don't try to solve it. Just keep doing it if it's working. Um, and don't think about it too much. Do you kind of get what I'm saying, Chris? Like with, when you're talking about like, well, what do they do with these keyword audiences? Why does it come down to one keyword then? And I, you got to have the discipline not to think about it because this is very, uh, black box stuff, I would say. Yeah. If, if search campaigns are a science, this is more of a pseudoscience. More of an art. Art. What's the difference between art and pseudoscience? Pseudoscience is an art that thinks it's a science. I don't know. Let's go with the last one. Placements. Yeah. So placements is the last way to target, uh, by content and you can target videos, channels, Apps, if you wanted to show up on specific apps, that's interesting. You can target websites if you want to show, show on the display network of, you know, embedded videos, any embedded wow. videos. That's on, cool. On that's very cool. Up. That's yeah. very cool. And then the new thing that I did not know about is you have, I don't know how new this is. Uh, maybe it's not new. Maybe it is video lineups. Now check this out, Jason. You can do video lineup targeting, which means by country. You can say, what are the top beauty videos mm -hmm. in the United States and show me on those? Right? That's you what can I'm talking choose, about. I like that. That's, what are the, like what is that. the top soccer, to keep it focused, what is the top soccer videos and who are watching those? You know, and, and, and not who, but show me on those uh, top trending. What's in, what's important is wow, it, this isn't like just that. this isn't. It's kind of like a topic, but it's not a topic. It's based on popularity and volume. So it's a it's a pairing of something that I did not know existed. Um, so explore that for sure. I think that's really interesting. Um, you know, there's a lot of really specific popular topics out there that you could show up on. So you got worldwide. Only thing you can do, at least it looks for me now, because I didn't do. Uh, video partners on this campaign popular youtube content worldwide just the most popular yeah, no one listening is going to be doing that and if you are no, and if you're that, that big please give me a call because you must yeah, have no, a massive no, budget no, um, no, go to, no give me a call yeah <laughs> yeah it gives both you know we'll team up yeah, if, if you're advertising yeah, we'll on fight, the top we'll videos in the world it. no we'll team up you, there's, those, oh, there's we'll plenty up. to okay. plenty uh to share there chris but so no one's going to be doing that but like um when you break it down to like the united states um, you could talk about the top, um, now some of this is like really big brand stuff, like showing up on the top family vlogs, Chris, like that's not really someone searching for something or mm. an exact product, but that's like more you want to get in front of a demo, but like the top gardening videos or the top golf videos, if you're in How that cool space. That? And again, here's the thing, Chris, that you don't have to be a national advertiser. Say you have like a golf local golf store in like a 
pretty small area, like maybe a exurb or something like that. And you're like, Hey, I just want to spend 250 bucks a month. I want golf people in my little town to know that we exist and they don't have to go look online to tons of different websites. They can come and get their golf stuff today. Like that's worth 250 bucks a month to, mm. to let people that's know cool. about your little store in your little town. And you could just target your little town, target the top golf videos, and then get in front of those people. So, yeah, this is a cool thing, Chris. And um, if it goes in the direction they've been going, they'll probably add more and more uh, categories here um, and niche it down even further because that's the thing about Google Ads. You can Always niche. growing. So, Chris, I'm so tempted here to you know, talk about what's the best, but it really is like – Either. There's there's validity to each kind of uh, strategy, yeah. and it's really just about trying a lot of different things out and, and seeing what connects. <clears throat> That's what's so cool. Um, you know, you can't try every keyword that comes to your mind uh, when it comes to search campaigns, but you could really try a lot of this stuff for a very cheap budget. So yeah. uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, uh, appreciate you guys listening. We're here every week. I am here at ChrisSchaefer.com every day. You get once a week with me here, but if you want me every day, I'm at chrisschafer.com. You can hire me for consulting, training, or just being buddies. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm at rothmanppc.com. If you're a small business owner out there, you've tried Google Ads, it's kind of working, you want it to work perfect, give me a call. Or if you're like a big agency out there and you're just looking for, finally, a provider will, that will just do it the right way, do it the way you need it to be done. Give me a call. And Chris, everybody, paidsearchpodcast.substack.com. We've got the newsletter coming out. Definitely the one tip of the week here for this episode is going to be video lineups. Uh, mm, it's a very sexy. cool tip that you found, and uh, we'll be yep. sharing that. So thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week on the next episode of the Paid Search Podcast.